For the past three and a half years, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 has been one of the highest recommended coolers when it comes to raw performance. Today, I'm happy to share with you that the next iteration, the Liquid Freezer 3, is now out and it's available in white, thanks to the high demand. This cooler takes a lot of the best aspects of the Liquid Freezer 2, but takes them up just a slight notch, which was really cool to see. Let's start off by talking about what's exactly the same between these coolers. There's actually quite a bit, which is nice to see. And then we'll dive into what's actually changed and the actual performance that this actually results in, which you're definitely not gonna wanna miss. First off, a lot of the best aspects of the Freezer 2 haven't changed, including the thicker than normal radiator at 38 millimeters rather than the traditional 30, an optimized AM5 mounting hardware for a better offset for better thermal dissipation, a VRM fan that actually works, more on that later. And what I actually really appreciate is the fact that the cooler comes pre-assembled just like the Liquid Freezer 2, meaning that all the wiring and fans are ready to go and they all daisy chain together, meaning you only need one PWM fan header and an ARGB header if you're getting the RGB version. See, all those aspects didn't change, and I really appreciate Arctic not really forcing some kind of change that wasn't necessary. And I definitely do think that they optimized a lot of the things that they had previously done well, and listened to the community when it came to the design. First off, let's talk about the white variant, because that was heavily requested by the community. And white PC components have been coming increasingly popular in the past few years, but getting them right can be tough as you have to match the colors of the plastics and the various metals of all the different components for your cooler. And I think Arctic did a really good job with this is everything's super consistent and clean. The cooler looks amazing in this color and it's gonna be a hot product just because of that. Now some other notable changes include the VRM fan, which is still in this new model, but it sits in a little bit of a different location. It's actually attached to this shroud here that's removable and it houses both an RGB design and the fan itself. It's a little bit of a larger fan as well, which is nice to see. And what's really cool is when this lights up, it kind of looks like an arc reactor, which is really cool. And this is also removable, as you guys can see, and it uses metal contacts to actually send the signal for the power of the fan and the RGB signal. But speaking of this removable cover, there's actually a couple ways to actually run the fans on this case. Because they're all pre-wired, there's actually a modular interface that sits on the pump block that control either the PWM and ARGB, just to control everything all together, or the PWM interface can actually be split the tune the VRM uh, fan, the pump, and the fans, depending on your liking. Speaking of the pump block, this is where you probably see the most amount of change happen. As they kind of rotated the pump a little bit so it stands upright, and as a result, you have a really new mounting mechanism that's different from a lot of other coolers, and it's really interesting. As if you have an Intel LGA1700 CPU, like the one I was testing here, it actually mounts the cooler using their included CPU contact frame, which is a design to help with better heat dissipation through optimizing the contact between the cooler itself and the CPU. This is because LGA 1700 CPUs have struggled with these kind of issues due to their elongated design because they're more rectangular, which has resulted in things with warping and not having a consistent level of contact. However, here's the problem I foresee with this cooler's mounting mechanism. See, for CPUs and motherboards, when it comes to warranty, the mounting mechanism isn't very clear on how much you can change it. And if you were gonna send this motherboard back, you're gonna have to put the original mounting hardware back on there. However, what they can tell is if the mounting hardware isn't perfectly set, they might just void your warranty and not go ahead and go ahead with the repair or replacement that's necessary, even if it's not related to whatever is going on. With that said though, installing the bracket was actually pretty easy. I had to use a cardboard box though to hold the back plate in place because if I tried to do it on the actual test bench, it was just falling off and I couldn't hold my hand there to tighten everything down properly. So that's definitely something you need to keep in mind when mounting this cooler, but it was actually pretty easy. And now let's go ahead and talk about the performance because that speaks for itself. Speaking of performance, let's start off with how I did my testing. I have an i7-14700K set up on an open air test bench with two different coolers that we're gonna be comparing against. First up, we have the Noctua NHD15, one of the best air coolers on the market, and the previous Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 model. To get started, I compared all the coolers and an idle run just to see how cool these CPUs would sit, and the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 was right on top, sitting at just 23 degrees Celsius. Next, to see how will this actually handle an actual stress test, 
I ran a 8064 system stability test, which puts the CPU under a full system load. And although the average temperatures were pretty much the same, they weren't you know, too different, it was impressive to see that the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 did outperform the other two coolers, which are some of the best ones on the market. Because the spike or the max CPU temperature, there was about a three degree improvement, which is I think a lot of thanks to the actual mounting mechanism for the cooler itself. And all three of these solutions I mentioned did prevent thermal throttling from taking place, which was great to see, but I do think the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 definitely did the best. Now, how does this translate into real performance? Let's talk about Cinebench R23. Using their 10 minute thermal throttled benchmark, it continues looping the same test over and over, seeing how scores increase or decrease with boost clocks. This is really a cool tool because you can see that a better cooler will result in better performance as it's able to prevent both thermal throttling and allow for longer boost clocks. And when you know it, when it came to single thread of performance, despite not really having it change too much, there was a nice gap when it came to multi-threaded performance because there was about a 2% increase for just having a better cooler, despite these being some of the best on the market like I previously mentioned. This is nice to see, and I really couldn't expect it to be too much better because a gradual increase over already a top-end product is kind of expected for this type of scenario. Speaking of performance, let's talk about noise because this is one area where I do think the Liquid Freezer 3 could improve a little bit. As it was just a little louder than the older Liquid Freezer 2 in my testing, it was quieter than the Noctua in HD15 when running the fans at 100% RPM. This is something I can probably say is chalked up to being a result of a different fan design and could easily be updated down the road. With all this said, is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 actually worth it? Well, if you ask me, I would say absolutely, because it's one of the best performing coolers out there on the market, and I absolutely love the super clean design that Arctic went for. They didn't focus on putting a you know fancy LCD screen on it, they basically just went very clean RGB, nice white design, and it was just a nice innovative uh, step up from where they once were, and I really like that they did take a leap of faith in going with a different mounting mechanism, bringing in that CPU mounting bracket, because that's something I don't don't think a lot of other manufacturers would try for and I really appreciate Arctic taking that leap because not a lot of other brands would actually do that. Another thing I will say though, if you are worried about the LGA 1700 issue when it comes to uh, possibly voiding your warranty on your motherboard or CPU, then definitely look at the Liquid Freezer 2 because it's still available right now. It's a great value and you can probably pick this up for even cheaper once this is officially out because the price will probably drop a little bit um, over the next couple months um, as the Liquid Freezer 2 probably phases out. So it's definitely something to keep in mind and that's another recommendation if you're gonna ask me. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe for more content like this. And if you haven't checked it out already, go ahead and check out our last cooler test where we looked at some of the best laptop coolers out on the market right here.